All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Houston Rockets Daily. I just woke up. Appreciate all y'all tuning in to. We are live for like the second half of the game last night, and then we did a little post game show. So appreciate all you guys for tuning in there. If you guys were there, uh, be sure to tune in next time. The Houston Rockets, we've lost 12 straight games, dude. It, uh, it, I'm getting a, a flash from the past, man. This literally feels. This feels so similar to last year, but. Um, Obviously, we have Jalen Green. I would say things are different in a sense of, like, I'm I'm more excited about the future. I can't wait for the draft this year. Dude, we were talking last night about how unbelievably stressful last season was in general. Because, dude, so the Rockets had the worst record in the NBA, which means they couldn't fall past five. That's a huge reason why I am happy we've lost 12 games, like, I want us to keep rattling off this win because now we have the worst record in the NBA, which means come draft day, come lottery day, sorry, the furthest we can go is five. The reason that was such a stressful thing last year was because there was always that thing in the back of your head saying, if the Houston Rockets are tanking this badly and we get the fifth pick, because we had top four protection on our, on our pick last year, which means if the lottery balls, there was a 48% chance that we fell outside of the top four and had the fifth pick, which means that pick is going, what was it, to OKC, that pick would no longer be ours. Dude, last year was so stressful. So there's no protection on this year's first round pick. So we can start talking about Chet. We can start talking about Jabari, Jaden, Paolo, AJ. We can start talking about all those guys. And um, I'm excited, dude. I'm excited, man. If if we had at worst the fifth pick in the draft, I would be so happy. I would be so happy. The Rockets' future is already looking bright. I want to talk about a couple of things from last night's game. First off, the Marcus Cousins drop 31. Uh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And I don't mean any disrespect against the Marcus Cousins, but like he should never be able to do that against any center ever again. For the rest of his for the rest of Boogie's career, you should. He'll probably never have another 30-point game, so I'm applauding DeMarcus Cousins, and I'm happy he actually did it, and I'm happy I got to witness it. But I think it just goes to show you, like, any center Christian Wood plays, I swear to you, they have a career night. Like, I, I swear to you, whoever the hell Christian Wood's guarding on a night-to-night -night basis, it's like, I, I, I swear it feels like 25% of the time that player has some type of career night, and it's just bad dude put christian wood at the four put shane good at the five and let's get the season going baby i think maybe the reason silas doesn't want to run with christian wood at the four and silas at the five for the rest of the season is because he knows how good shane good is and he knows when he lets shane good off the leash will probably start to be a lot more competitive in these basketball games. You look at Shangun last night, 11 points, 10 rebounds. I picked him up in fantasy. He had a steal. He had a block, too. Give me that double-double. Uh, 22 minutes, though, he was efficient. He played well. I liked some of his defensive stops. Um, loved some of his passes. Shangun, the, the future is bright, man. The future is, the future is very bright. Um... Kevin Porter Jr., I'm going to make a whole video on this. Kevin Porter Jr. is shooting 59% from the free throw line. I cannot believe it. Career-wise, he's somewhere in the 70s, like 72%. But this year, Kevin Porter Jr., you heard that correctly, is shooting 59% from the free throw line. It's like, it's just, it's terrible. If you were wondering, <laughs> this sucks, dude. We're the, so bad at free throw. KPJ shooting 59.3% technically from the line. Christian Wood shooting 59.2% technically from the line. It's just an absolute nightmare, dude. Thank you, Jalen Green. Thank God we have Jalen Green. Jalen went off last night, um, particularly in the assist category. He had 18 points, 7 assists uh, for 50% shooting, and then shot 2 of 6 from downtown. So 18, 5, and 7. That's, those are like Cade numbers right there. People saying all Jalen can do is score. Um, well, watch his game tonight. Seven assists. I love to see it. Because KPJ wasn't doing anything for us last night. I mean, he's so inconsistent. I'm not giving up on Kevin Porter Jr. at all. He just is so inconsistent. And I blame all the injuries that he gets like every other week. He's becoming injury prone. It's 
not scary, but it's something I would keep an eye on. It's something I'm keeping an eye on is, you know, is he injury? Is he an injury prone player? Or what's the deal? He tweaks something new every other week. So we'll keep an eye on it. We'll monitor it. But Jalen Green last night, I was very impressed. He also is just kind of, you can tell he's evolving. You can tell he's getting better. So what happens a lot of the times is when a pick gets, when he gets a screen, a lot of the times now he's actually splitting the defenders. Like he's he's splitting it before the pick is set and he's just splitting it. And he's getting a clear look at the lane. He usually honestly gets fouled, whether it's gonna get called or not, that's up to the ref in that particular scenario. But he's been splitting a lot of these screens, which means he's getting downhill. That's what we want with Jalen Green. We want Jalen Green going downhill. If Jalen Green has the ball, downhill. Jalen Green is off ball, which is what he is better at. If So if Kevin Porter Jr.'s point guard, whoever's the point guard, Schroeder, whoever, whoever's out on the court with him, Jalen needs to be cutting. He needs to be just running around because we want him downhill. We want Jalen Green downhill. We want him to be able to work him alone in ISO and all that good stuff. But at the same time, we want him to get to the rim. We definitely want him to get to the rim. Christian Wood had a good game offensively, though, you know. I got it. Guys, I got my 20 and 10. Christian, we're down 25. 22 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists. That was a thing um, that I feel like needs to be brought up. Christian Wood, assist-wise, 5 assists. I don't even know the last time I've seen that. Um, I, I, he, he was like a willing passer tonight. He was a willing passer, and it was really cool to see. Christian Wood actually had offensively maybe just like a perfect game. Maybe not a perfect game because what he go to from downtown, so maybe technically not perfect. Eight of eight from the free throw line. Like, yes, you are hearing that correctly. And yes, I am reading that correctly. Christian Wood, 100% from the free throw line last night. A round of applause, dude. That's what I want. See, so people were asking me yesterday in my live stream, like, do you want to trade Wood in the offseason? And it's like, kind of. The thing is with Christian Wood, his contract's so cheap. I would love to put Christian Wood at the four and just give him a dominant center. Put Shane Goon at the five. Put Christian Wood at the four, and I'll run with that all next year. I'm okay with running that. Because you guys know my take on Christian Wood. I'm hard on him because he was severely lacking in the middle of the season. There was no effort being displayed. He wasn't passing the ball. He wasn't playing a lick of defense. Still isn't really playing a lick of defense, but offensively, he has gotten a lot more efficient, and he's trying a lot harder, and you can just tell. You can tell he's having a lot more fun out there. The players look like they're enjoying him a lot more. Uh, that maybe the body language was saying kind of around that like January, December mark uh, where things were a little bit dicey, which was, it wasn't that long ago. That was like two months ago. So Christian Wood, uh, the jury's still out. But the thing is, uh, I've been saying like if he can get back to 2010, if Christian Wood's putting up 20 and 10 for me offensively. I will like that's what I am looking for. But the thing is, he was struggling so much to start the season. He was shooting like 50 percent from the free throw line. He was shooting bad from the field. He was shooting bad from three. He was only averaging like 15 points. He was having a good amount of rebounds. But if I said if Christian Wood can work himself back up to 20 and 10, that shows me a lot of things. If he can have two seasons where he averages 20 and 10, that's very few players in the league can do that. So I'm open. I'm open to it. Hit the like button. Hit that sub button if you guys enjoyed and you want daily Rockets content. Drop some comments down below on last night's game. And uh, I'll see you guys later.